to finish up the reactions of alkenes we will talk about cycle additions which means you're adding two alkenes together and you're making a ring the scientist and his postdoc research assistant uh, alda the scientist deals and his assistant alda uh, discovered a reaction called the deals alda 4 plus 2 cycle addition because you'll be adding four pi electrons and two pi electrons to make a six membered ring okay uh, it's very easy to do it gives high yields involves a lot of heating conjugated diene okay you see the conjugated diene has four pi electrons because it has two pi bonds each bond is two electrons in, in, it involves conjugated diene and an alkene or an alkyne so if you have an alkene there's gonna be one pi that's gonna be involved that gives you two electrons that's why i said four plus two and these guys once they react so let's say this attacks that this double bond moves over here and these pi bonds attack that you're gonna make a new pi bond let's say between carbon two and three you make a new bond between carbon one and six okay and then another new bond between four and five so you're making a six member ring that's why i say there are four pi electrons plus two pi electrons gives you a six member ring four plus two cycle addition so in this rearrangement of pi bonds as i pushed arrows you will produce two, two new sigma bonds that and that that's what was used to close the ring this arrow and this arrow will form the two new sigma bonds and you're gonna uh, you, you're gonna be forming a ring okay okay so let's look specifically at the example so die in simply means two pi two pi so like one three buta die in will be drawn like that one two three four we see a pi bond on one and three so one three but because there are four carbons die because there are two double bonds and then in one two buta die one three buta die in reacting with ethene ethene is just is that's not an equal sign let me show the hydrogens for clarity it will look like that so this is the four pi system this is the two pi system okay uh the product will be cyclohexene which is what i just did in the previous slide so what you do I would prefer that you you number or label these carbons so you know where you're making new bonds. So here we are going the other way around. It doesn't matter. The way I went here, I went counterclockwise with my arrows. Here you'll go, you can go clockwise. So you're making a new bond here. But I would prefer that you really just attack that carbon. Okay. This won't work with our so you have to use this attack that carbon and then this pi bond has to move because this is a new sigma bond wanting to form you cannot have five bonds around carbon four so this gives way by resonance and if this moves here then this will also have to move and we're gonna stretch it to attack the carbon that's the correct way of pushing arrows so this is the other new sigma bond as you do so you are typically connecting carbon one to six with this sigma bond and carbon five to four with this sigma bond and you're forming a new pi bond between two and three so you 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 are getting a new pi bond formed right here new sigma new sigma and you're getting a six membered ring we call cyclohexene so that's the other reaction it's not always just uh, open diens you can have closed diens or and in fact the ones that the diens that are in the ring they are more reactive those guys are more reactive reason being it's always 
the die-ins are always on the same side okay we call it uh, sin die-in okay or one will call it z conformation it's they are always on the z conformation whenever you have a ring but this one can rotate to give you the trans for the cyclization to occur for this cyclization to occur these double bonds of the die-in must be seen not trans so the trans will never do dios alda you want the seen one otherwise called the z the trans is other calls e this will not do deals other they have to face the same side so they will react with the die in on the other side now there are factors that make uh, die ins reactive and die in of us more reactive so die ins are characterized by this is very important they need to be electron rich so you need to have electron donating groups uh, like oh on the die in so for example Let's say you have an OH. This lone pair of electron can be donated into the pi bond by resonance. So that's an example of electron donating group. Instead of OH, you can also have an R group, which is just like a methyl, ethyl, a ring, carbon containing structure substituent. Or you can have NH2. You can have OR group, that's an ether. Okay. That goes with die-ins. They need to be electron-rich, so they need electron-donating substituents or the, at least hydrogens. Okay, You don't want anything that will pull off electrons. But for dienophiles, they will want electron... Uh, uh, the dienophiles sh should be electron-deficient. So if they need to be electron-deficient, so they will want electron with drawing groups on them, electron drawing groups. And we'll also see the table of these groups in chapter four. So you see here, because of dipole moments, you are pulling out electrons. So that's electron drawing group. The carbon is an electron drawing group. So it makes the diamond fire more reactive towards the else outer. Here, you have a triple bond to the nitrogen again nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon you have electron drawing group okay that makes the dienophile electron deficient and more reactive of course here you have a carbonyl so to show to show one of the oxygen uh, so that's an electron drawing group same thing down here if i show the second oxygen these are esters esters are electron drawing groups so again those are electron drawing groups and they make the dienophile di more reactive. Remember, diene has two pi bonds. Dienophile will have one pi bond between carbon carbon. Again, this is another extra group, electron drawing group carbonyls. Those are deactivating. Those are um, those are withdrawing electron from the diene and therefore activating it because we want the dienophile to be electron poor. This is also another electrophile, even though it's a triple bond, only one of the pies will react. We'll look at, we'll look at an example shortly. So again, you have dipole moments pointing the more electronegative nitrogen. If I would show the nitrogen on the nitro group there. So um, it's electron drawing. So again, this is a, a good dinophile. So in other words, Diens must be electron rich. You want electron donating groups on them. Dienophiles must be electron poor. You want them to be electron deficient. Then, therefore, you want electron drawing groups on them, which is what I've shown by dipole moments. All right. You might also be asked to show stereochemistry. See how these guys are on the same side. Right, so in the product, we have to show them on the same side using wages either both of them towards you or both of them away. Why is it so? The reason is this electron, okay, this is a dinophile. We say dinophiles must be electron deficient, and you see you have an extra. So this is electron drawing, this electron drawing, so this is dienophile. 
So these electron drawing groups, which happen to be A stars, are on the same side. So if they are on the same side, we have to show what we call syn stereochemistry. I told you to show stereochemistry, we use wedges, where we can show groups towards you, away from you, up or down. So anyway, let's um, do our Diels Alder cyclization, 4 plus 2 addition. So you have 4 pi electrons here, 2 pi electrons taking part in the cyclization, so it's 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 Diels Alder reaction. So we'll pull our electrons there, touch that carbon, especially in our, this has to give way to go there. And this has to give way to attack that carbon. Notice that you are connecting carbon 1 and 6 to you are making a new sigma bond there. You are going to make a new sigma bond there. And you are going to make a new pi bond there between 2 and 3. So that's the new pi. This is a new sigma and that's a new sigma. This should be carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, what I am insisting on this slide is that if the substituents are on the same side, what one would call C's, then you have to show them on the same side. Okay, C's gives you the syn stereochemistry or C's stereochemistry, if you want to call it that way. Here, the ester groups are 180 degrees apart, so this dienophile is trans. Notice that we always want our diin to be to have the double bonds on the same side, I already emphasized on that. So this is trans. So if this is trans, then the esters will end up on opposite configuration in 3D space. So this is towards you, this is away, or the other way around. But they will never be wage wage or dash dash whenever you're starting with a trans dienophile. So you really have to emphasize on stereochemistry based on the structure of the dienophile. You can predict whether these ester groups will be, both of them will be towards you or both of them will be away from you or one will be up, one down, one towards, one away, which is what's happening here. So again, just to cyclize our 4 plus 2 cycle addition, I want to locate where my new sigma bonds, new pi bonds are formed. So I number them so my eye could track, track what's happening. So we push this to attack the carbon. This double bond gives way because the pi, pi bond of the double bond is the weakest of the two between the pi and the sigma. And this opens up to attack here. You get a new sigma bond, new sigma bond, and here you're going to get a new pi bond. So this is again is the new pi bond. That's a new sigma bond, new sigma bond. If you're to number is 1, 2, 3, 4, five and six so you made a six member ring by your four plus two pi electrons cycle addition by Diels alder reaction usually these reactions will require heat anyway so let's do some practice so what if i give you a cyclic diin this is where things might become a little bit complex and this time i'm giving you you are ester group. So this is the dienophile. Obviously, there's an electron drawing group here. That's a diene. So let me label this one, two, three, four. I'm only labeling the carbons taking part in the reaction. So I'm asking you to draw the product by Diels Alder. Alder. So now. This becomes a little bit technical because there's this carbon here, 7, 8, that doesn't have a pi bond that will not take part in the reaction. So that's going to make a bridge. So let's use this carbon 5 and attack carbon 4. That's a new sigma bond to be formed. This makes a new pi bond to be formed there. And this opens up through this carbon to attack 6. Okay. So you're going to make the ones in blue are your new bonds. I'm going to use the red pen here to draw the products that are formed. So three, two and three bond is still there. And then you have four and then you have one there. 
but notice that seven and eight were not used so i'm gonna just draw them as a bridge okay and then of course you have you have six and five and then you have this ester group now the ester group must not be on the same side as the carbon 7 8 so we'll put it down here by rule you don't want it to be on the same side because they're gonna crowd somewhere up here if you draw it up here it will crowd so you'll get your ester group right there okay now my blue bonds are not extending so i'm gonna put the extension here to show that four five are connected one and six are connected Okay, so that will be the product. Alternatively, you can draw it this way. Um, you can draw it this way. For such a question, you really have to practice to get it right. If you don't practice, you will never get it right. So this is my carbon 2, carbon 3. My carbon 1 is right there carbon 6, carbon 5, and then my carbon 4 is right here. The blue is the newly formed sigma, sigma, and pi. Between carbon, okay, carbon 1 should be bonded to carbon 7, carbon 4 to 8, so those ones will be in between here. Obviously, you are seeing this bridging carbon 7 and 8 uh, on top, so I'm using the wedges to define their placement in space so they are on top okay so this should be carbon 7 and this one right here should be carbon 8 okay so let me see if I can just draw draw it big so you can see it so this is 7 and that's 8 okay this is 4 that's one and then your ester group we said you don't want it to be up here because if you put it up here if you are to draw it up here it will crowd with this carbon here so there's gonna be sterics so that's the reason why we don't draw it up there we draw it down here okay so let me get rid of it so this must not be here down there so in that in which case i have to give it the opposite uh, wedge to the bridging carbon seven and eight to really show that they are away from each other they are trans okay so this will be the same as that this is the side view of the product this is the top area view of the product So I wanted to mention that so you don't get confused. Now let me do one more example here that I know could be common. So let's say you have a double bond and you're given a diene. A diene, I'm going to use a different color to track it. So let's say your diene is a triple bond. And this triple bond has electron drawing groups. This time we put an aldehyde there. You can put any electron drawing group. All I want to emphasize is that only one of the pi bonds of the triple bond will take part in the DLS order. The diene could be a ring or a cyclic. It doesn't matter. All I want you to sh to see is that alkynes can also do this order reaction just like that. So again, that could be one, two, three, four. Five, six. You are using one of the pi's to attack carbon four. The pi bond gives way. This also gives way as it attacks carbon six. So the product that you get will look like this. Mm -hmm. Let's get back my black. So this time this is not a ring, so we're not gonna draw all this mess. So that was one, two. 
3, 4, and they are connected by new sigma bonds. Let's use the red. So these are new sigma bond between 1 and 6, 4, and 5. I'll get back my blue. So I used one of the pi bonds, so I'm left with two bonds. One is sigma, the other is the second pi bond. And then the aldehyde will be on the plane. No need to show stereochemistry because remember, sp2 carbons are trigonal planar. So this will be carbon 6 and that will be carbon 5. So whenever you're using triple bond, you're going to be left with 1 pi. All right. So talking of triple bonds, we say that they are linear. So the bond angle should be 180 degrees. Hybridization, you have two electron domains. So it should be sp. And you have one of the bonds will be a pi. The other one will be sigma and another one will be uh, a pi okay so let me write the sigma well so you have two pi bonds and one sigma bond on a triple bond so these are just groups it could be hydrogens or other carbons so if you really want to see how it looks like that's how it looks like uh, it's linear see how linear it is very linear and the 3d model here shows you that you have two sets of empty p orbitals uh, what you'll think is empty p orbitals but those two two sets will contain i think they have one electron each not empty so if this blue overlaps with that blue you get a pi and then if this blue overlaps this blue you get another pi and then in between you already have a sigma bond so you see that's how a triple bond will look like if you blow up the orbitals okay so the way alkenes react will be very similar to the way react alkynes will react although the alkynes will react a little bit slower okay but both of them will do uh, uh, halogenation. For example, we talked about halogenation. So the halogen is added across the double, but it has to be added in trans or anti fashion like we did in alkenes. Remember, in alkenes we said if you had, if you add a dihyl dihalide like Br to Cl2, one bromine will be down, the other one will be up. That was the entire addition. But at least here we have a double bond, so we can call it trans. If you keep adding more bromine, then the second pi will go. Here the first pi was taken out to make the to do the addition. If you add excess of bromine, the second pi will go, and you're gonna end up with a uh, completely substituted, uh, completely added bromides across the pi bond so carbon one carbon two so it's gonna be one one because the bromines are on one one and two two there are four bromides so it's tetra and then bromo because they are substituents bromine when bromine is a substituent we call it bromo chlorine would have been chloro iodine would have been iodine fluorine would have been fluoro and then two carbons, so ethane, A and E, because there's no longer, there's no pi bonds anymore. They can also be reduced by a reagent called Lindlas. You know, if you use Lindlas, typically, actually, if you had a triple bond and you have excess hydrogen, let's say this is excess, all the pi bonds will be taken out. You're going to be left with an alkane, typically. From alkyne to alkane. If you want to move from alkyne to alkane, just add excess hydrogen gas. It takes you all the way to alkane. But you can use a weaker catalyst to stop the reaction halfway. So this would have first been reduced to an alkene and then the alkene to the alkane. With excess hydrogen goes all the way from alkyne to alkene 
actual can. But if you're using Lindlas, it stops halfway at the alkene. And it gives you a specific stereochemistry where the R groups will be on the same side. So we call this C's. Because you see, if you cut the double one across, these B groups are on the same side. So it's C's. If you are to number, you number the longest chain containing the pi bond. So you see the double bond. The first time you encounter your sp2 carbons on the second carbon so it's two butene because there are four carbons but it's gonna be c's all right if you are to compare the boiling point of butane is 27 boiling point of butene is 3.7 so they are different compounds so key point lindlas catalyst stops the reduction of alkynes at the alkene stage and not only that it gives you the c's alkene there's another reagent that stops at the alkene and gives you the trans. Makovnikov rule applies in alkyne reactions where if you're adding a reagent that has an electropositive part, like we discussed in alkenes, that hydrogen ends up on the side of the pi bond that has more hydrogens. So obviously, this carbon has no hydrogens. Because it already has four bonds. These hydrogens you're looking at on an, are on another carbon, not this sp carbon. While this one has one hydrogen. So this blue hydrogen should end up where there's already one as you add. You're going to be left with one pi bond, one sigma bond. In other words, you're going to be left with a double bond. Because you consumed or you used up one pi to grab the second hydrogen. Now there are two hydrogens. The plus sign goes on the other side of, of the pi where there was less hydrogens just like how we explained how to form carbocations and then the bromine that left during this first stage of Markovnikov addition will come back and attack as a nucleophile okay because nucleophiles like positive centers you attack you get a substituted alkene in this case it's gonna be two bromopropene now, if you're adding excess of the of the HBr, this product that you made here will react one more time. Again, following Markovnikov rule, here there's no hydrogens. Okay, here there's two hydrogens. So this hydrogen, electropositive hydrogen of the acid, will end up where there was two. So now you have three. The plus sign will end up where there was less hydrogens. And then the bromine that left during this first step will come and attack this C plus center. You get 2, 2 dibromo propane. Okay, so that's just an example. So simply put, if you have a terminal alkyne and you have an R group, and let's say you have HX, where X could be bromine chlorine or iodide one would expect if this is excess you're gonna go all the way to where your two halogens are put on one of uh, one of the carbons which you, which was in the middle actually and then this side you have a ch3 so generally this structure is just this structure Okay, if it was just one equivalent of HBr, this is where you stop. If it's just one molecule of HBr, this is where you stop. But if it's an excess, because now this is a second equivalent, that's what I mean by excess. You have too much. If you have excess, then this will go further and react with the second HBr in the same fashion to give you that. Okay, you can also do the same thing um, where you'll do Markovnikov addition of elements of water. So this reaction is hydration. So mechanistically, you would expect that um, this will attack that mechanistically. Uh, you take the, the, the reaction is acid catalyzed so the pi bond 
will be activated by attacking the acid part and then again you're gonna get a plus sign there because Markovnikov addition dictates that the CH will grab that hydrogen because the hydrogen goes where there's more. Only then will your water come to attack. Uh -huh. So let's put the product here. When H2 attacks, you get this product and a CH2. Of course, the oxygen is positively charged and then what another molecule of H2O will simply come and take out this extra hydrogen by proton transfer. You get your enol. But now this enol can do what we call tautomerism. It rearranges. It's just like a resonance thing. So it's like um, this pi bond will be used to take out that hydrogen. Again, by fashion of Markovnikov addition, where this hydrogen right here is gonna end up on this carbon you have ch2 so you see now you have ch3 and then the bond between the h and o will be used to make a double bond that's why we make this pi bond so the pi cc double bond will be used to pick up the hydrogen this single bond is used to make another pi bond so you get a ketone so this is called enol tautomerism this is an enol because you have the alcohol part which is the OH, and you have the dub, the alkene part, which is the C, double bond C. So there's a rearrangement from the enol to the ketone as you do your hydration of alkynes by Markovnikov addition. The terminal hydrogen, which is a hydrogen on the at the end of the of the triple bond, is acidic. So one can use a strong base. One can use a strong base to pull off that hydrogen. And these two electrons are donated to the purple carbon. You get this salt. Okay, you get this salt. So this is a proof that alkynes are acidic because acids are proton donors. So this hydrogen is donated to the base. The NH2 minus becomes NH3. So alkynes are acidic. Okay. Now, the reason for acidity is because of the S character. There are two electron domains around this carbon, so it's SP. So the S character here is 50%. S character here is 50%. The P character is 50%. Here, you have three electron domains. So the hybridization is S, P, P, SP2, so to speak. So you have three things in there. If you share them equally in a percentage, the percentage of S will be 33 and a third. So each of these piece has 33 and a third. So multiply by two, you get 66, two thirds of the P character. Notice that you moved from the 50% S character to 33 and a third S character. Here you have four electron domains so the hybridization will be sp3 the s character will be 25 percent of the s and 75 percent of the piece because each piece 25 so the reason why sp uh the reason why alkynes are acidic is because the carbon holding the hydrogen has a higher percentage of s character the higher the s character the higher the acidity okay so next we talk about thermodynamics and equilibrium how do you predict which side is more reactive 